Now, if you own a Line 6 product and you've authorized it to run with Propellerhead Record, and you also have some of the additional model packs, you can access these models using the Line 6 amplifiers in Record. Now, a quick way to check this is through the Line 6 Monkey application. If you have Propellerhead Record authorized, it will tell you that it's activated. If not, it'll give you directions on how to get this working. Once you have everything authorized, you can then go into Pod Farm and create patches, which you can then open up in the Line 6 amplifiers in Record. So in Pod Farm, you'll see the guitar amps, the bass amps, the mic preamps, distortion pedals, dynamics devices, and various other effects at your disposal. So now I want to create a custom guitar chain and record, but first I need to create the patches in Pod Farm. So let me start off with creating a guitar amp. We'll scroll through here. We'll use this 1967 Class A top boost. Double click. We'll adjust a few of the parameters. And we'll set the cabinet distance and we'll switch this to a U67 condenser. And I'm going to save this patch. And I'll just put it on the desktop. So we'll call this A30. 67. So now I'm going to create a mic preamp patch, and I think I'll select this Vintage UK device. Double click on that, and I'll just leave the EQ settings flat and save this patch. Save that to the desktop, and we'll call that 1073. Okay, so let's create a new patch now, and I'm going to pick a flanger, drag that in, double click, and I'm going to add it to this track, and I already know the tempo, so I'm going to set the tempo manually here to 133 beats per minute, and then enable sync, and then we'll set it to a whole note, which is 0.55 hertz. Save this patch. L6 flanger. And then I will create a new patch. One more stomp box. We'll go to the distortions. And I'll select this classic distortion pedal here. Push the drive a little bit. Pull the gain back, brighten the tone, and we'll save this patch also to the desktop, and I'll call that Stomp Rodent. And now I'm going to switch over to Record. And let's take a listen to this loop that I've got set up. This is just a guitar that's been recorded through a DI and record. For the four different Line 6 patches that I just created, I'm going to have to create four different Line 6 amplifiers in my Combinator insert effect. I'll do this second one. Three and four. So now I'm going to relabel these in the order of how I'm going to have my signal processed. So guitar amp one is going to be stomp box one. Then guitar amp two will be stomp box two. Guitar amp three is going to be my amp cabinet. And then guitar amp four is going to be my pre amp. So on stomp box one, I'm going to load up that distortion pedal, stomp rodent. On stomp box two, I'm going to load up the flanger. On the third amplifier, I'm going to load the AC3067. 
And on the fourth unit, I'm going to load that 1073 mic preamp model. Okay, let's take a listen and make some adjustments to this configuration. I'm going to switch the preamp into bypass, the amp cabinet into bypass, and the flanger into bypass, and just listen to the stomp box. Bring that volume down a little bit. So here's our guitar effects chain, which is using four different Line 6 models. A distortion pedal, a flanger pedal, a guitar amp, and a mic preamp. This is a convenient way to use the different Line 6 models because you can then go back in and start switching around guitar amps or switching around mic preamps or even the effects models. Now I'll add some controls to this. I'm going to use all four buttons to control the bypass on each of the four amps. So we'll go to stomp box one, we'll take button one, and we'll select enabled. And we'll set the minimum value to two, two equals bypass, and we'll set the maximum value to one, and one is the on state. And I will label this stomp one on, and we'll set that. And you'll see when I toggle a button, it goes from bypass to on. And I will repeat that with button two for the stomp box two. Two, one. Amp cabinet is button three. Enable two for button four. Set the minimum maximum values for that. Also preamp. On. So now these controls make it easy for me to go and switch in and out these different effects. With the distortion pedal and with the flanger pedal, the only active control is the volume knob, so there's no need to map any of those. The same applies for the preamp, only the drive and volume controls are active. So I'm going to map the rotary controls to the amp cabinet device here. So I'll select amp cabinet, then we'll take rotary 1 and map that to drive. Enable that drive. Rotary 2, I'll map to base. Label that base. Rotary 3, I'll map to presence. And rotary 4, I'll map to volume. Label that volume. Then I can save this patch. Line six chain. Obviously having all of these extra ant models and effect models at your disposal is a cool feature. This provides you with a wide range of audio manipulation capabilities that you can use as the basis of combinator effects patches.